Hello YouTube, it's your boy Video Gamer 725 here, and today we're doing a Sacred Beads deck profile for July 2020. Um, I'm kind of excited for this deck because the Sacred Beads structure that came out, well, when it came with a lot of support for this deck, and now now viable to play in today's game. Um, there is going to be cards that are missing here because I was not able to get them, but I will I will say what cards are those, so you can just put them in the deck, but. Uh, and you also hear like the sound in the background it's because of my air conditioner or like it's pretty loud Sorry about that Because right now it's pretty much hot, hot in my house. So yeah, but uh, Without further ado, let's get into the deck profile of the sacred beast structure deck or no, sacred beast deck for July 2020 We're playing two of the Harmon Lord of the striking thunder this card um, we have it because when it deals damage or uh, when it when it uh, face up defense position monster is destroyed by battle by this card inflict a thousand damage. Well, that's not pretty bad because we, we want we want to do damage to our opponent as much as possible, and especially when we're doing like a big event. If your if your opponent has like the same life points or he has like one like a thousand higher life points than you. You can just attack a defense monster, effect triggers to burn your uh, attack, burn your opponent attack for a thousand. So it's pretty good. Um, I think there's other effects monster that does the same thing. I can't remember what cards are those, but yeah, I'll play two of these copies of this because pretty much this, this two are like this sacred beast is mostly the one you'll probably get out most of the times. Then we're playing the one um, Rabiel Lord of Phantoms. Uh, he generates uh, tokens uh, when your opponent uh, summons a monster, and you, I could. And he all he also has another, a unique effect that I could tribute a monster and wait, uh, tribute a monster or or something like that, and gains uh, the attack equal to that tribute monster. It's pretty good, and plus we got like, another card that allows us to double the attack, and I'm about to get into that right now. So I'll play one Raphael Lord of Phantoms. You can play like one more of it if you feel comfortable about it. But at this build, I feel like one Raphael Lord of Phantoms uh, feels uh, okay to in my deck. Then we're playing the Raphael, the Lord of the Phantom Shrooming Sleeper. This card is so good because if if our opponent somehow like sends this card to the graveyard and they can use this, and they can use this effect. You can use this effect to tribute a monster, tribute a monster to X card in my hand, and that's it. It's pretty good. So I'll play one copy because if you have Raphael, Lord the Phantom in the field, and your opponent try, if your opponent try to attack a monster or you want to attack a monster, quick effect send this card to the graveyard, doubles the attack, and it can attack all monsters on the field thanks to this card. So pretty much, it's a straight OTK for this deck. Then we're playing one Riot Lord of the Searing Flames. Uh, I have it just to just to have like more level tens, uh, more level tens, just to like XCs for like a level ten XCs monster. But we have it here. Uh, if we have like uh, continuous, uh, continuous trap cards, it gains a thousand for each of them in the graveyard or either graveyard if I'm not correctly. But most of the time, we would not get them out on the field. We would just have um, Raviel or Harmon on the field. But we just have it just because we just fill up like an empty spot of our, of our deck. Then we play three copies of Beckoning Beast. This card allows us to search any sacred card or any card that lists sacred beasts are their names. And it's so good because. If we, uh, if we don't have like our one of combo pieces and we know we have this one, we will just normal summon this card uh, on the summon or when this card's normal summon, we can add a Orion Lord of um, the Three Lords or any cards that have their name on it. And plus, it also gives us gives us an additional su a normal summon as well, thanks to a Dark Beckney Beast effect. So I'll play three copies of Beckney Beast. 
that we play three copies of Chaos Sony Beast. This one allows us to tribute itself to special a sick a one of the sacred beasts from my hand. And it's pretty good. And he also has another unique effect that you could banish this card to add uh, Fallen Paradise to your deck from your deck to the hand. So and Fallen Paradise is just insane in this deck. It gives gives you pluses when you active this effect. And plus you could just and plus you just this is a more easy way to get your level 10 as well. If you end up drawing your sacred beast monsters. Then we're playing three copies of Dark Sunny Beast. This one provides us a special a sacred beast from our deck straight to the field zone. The bad part is that when we activate the effect, we cannot attack for the rest of the turn after this card was activated. It's not a bad part, but if we go first and we normal and we get him out and tribute itself, especially a sacred beast from our deck to the field, then it will not be a really problem. But yeah. And he also can banish itself from the graveyard to add a sacred beast from our deck to hand. So that's not bad, so we can just pretty much combo up with Chaos Summoning and Dark Summoning Beast. Then on to our non sacred beast cards. We're playing the three uh, the three dangers, Danger to Snoko, Jackalope, and Ezzy. Uh, the reason we're playing this card is because it's like a replacement for like Magician, magician Souls. Uh, if you have it, play in the Sacred Beast deck because it's so good. Because there'll be times you draw like spell cards, and some of the spell cards you need, if you just Magician Soul, Soul, send those cards and draw the same amount, same amount of cards, how much it's guarded. Well, we play the uh, Danger card because we could try to get like draw power, plus we could just use it to special summon him and use it for materials for like later games. So, this is why. So we play three dangers. You can play the other dangers if you want, like uh, Bigfoot and Thunderbird. But Susanoko, Jackalope, and Nezzy are too good for me in this deck. The, onto the spells. They were playing um, Opening of the Spurry Gates. This card um, pretty much allows us to add any card that has Sacred Beast. In reality, all cards in this deck pretty much do the same thing. And. It's, it's just pretty much just busted. If you end up drawing like none of your combo pieces, but you draw this one, activate it, get like get like Dark Summoning Beast, Chaos Summoning, or this one, then pretty much you can just get busted by that. And it also has another another unique effect that if you have a Fiend level zero in your graveyard, you could discard a card, especially any Fiend monster. So pretty much. If you have this card in graveyard, use the effect to detach a, detach a card or discard a card, and special the same one you just sent to the graveyard, and pretty much use the effect to tribute special a sacred beast from your deck. So this is why opening gates should go, should be at three, and every sacred beast deck. Then we play the three Allure Darkness because we have a lot of darks and we want to have if we want to draw our combo pieces. And Allure Darkness, not bad, we just banish a card. So that's why we control, that's why we run three copies. So if we have at least dark and we draw the dark, we can just banish a card that we pretty much don't need no more. So Allure Darkness is pretty good. Then called by the grave. I play Call of the Grave because if we, if we want to add a card to combo up and our opponent try to uh, interrupt with hand trap like Ghost Mourners, uh, Baylor, Ash Blossom, or stuff like that, you can just Call of the Grave to stop them because in this deck, it's pretty much, it can pretty much be stopped by any hand traps, even if they're permanent. So that's why we play Call of the Grave to stop the hand traps. So we just combo out without worrying that they will stop us with hand traps. Um, then we play two, um, two Fallen Paradise. This card is so good because if we control a Sacred Beast monster and uh, like Orias, or our Harmon, Raphael, or Orias on the field, pretty much they cannot be destroyed by card effects. Also, this card. Provides it to draw two more cards 
from our decks. So this card is insanely good and plus thanks to same chaos summoning, we can just find a way to, to add this card from my deck to hand. So this this card is just nuts. So pretty much if your opponent tried to lightning storm your whole field with um say for example your sacred beast monster, you can't think to fall paradise. So two two fall paradise is the be best option. Then we play one for one, foolish burial, uh, dimension fusion destruction, and cerulean sky spire. Uh, one for one to get our chaos, chaos summoning, foolish burial to send like a, a, a dark monster or any type of monster. This card allows us to fusion summon um, our sacred beast from a hand, field or graveyard by banishing them, and cerulean sky fire. This card negates spell trap while you control Haman on the field. If your opponent try lightning storm you or dark will no more, uh, you just activate this, put Harmon defense, and negate the spell or trap on the field. This card is so good because lightning storm to thing now, and we don't want and we don't want our board to get blown out thanks to lightning storm. Uh, Dark World Noir, we don't mind, we don't want to negate that one because pretty much our level 10 um, Sacred Beast monster don't have any uh, ability on their turn and that's why we play Cerulean Skyfire because it can just negate spell try and put Harmon defense so if your opponent has playing Green Mod, you try to OTK you ah man, let me just, let me just negate one of your spells if you, that you activate and then put my Harmon defense, you wanna hit all you will not be able to OTK. So this, I'll prefer you play one, because play two, you, will, you don't want to see it. Plus, you can search it off with some of the Sacred Beast card that allows to search it. On the traps, we play three copies of Crackdown. Um, that's what I said in the beginning of the video. I am going to miss some cards. Uh, Crackdown is so good because uh, we can infinitely loop this card and we will show you a card that allows you allows you to add a continuous trap from your graveyard back to the hand and pretty much if you're we will activate this on your, our opponent's normal summon because if we go against an emancipator and and we get cracked down this pretty much they will have a little bit of hard time um doing their combo because they really need rock types and or an emancipator cards to special summon or to combo off. If you could just do that, pretty much your opponent could just pass turn and you could try to find a way to OTK your opponent as fast as possible. And then, then the three trap cards for the Sacred Beast is Awakening of the Sacred Beast. This card is goddamn nuts for multiple reasons. If you control one, Sacred Beast. Each time your opponent summons, like normal special summons, gain life points equal to your opponent's attacking monsters. So each time your opponent special summons, you gain life points from that. If you control two Sacred Beast monsters, it becomes a skill drain. So pretty much you act, you gain the life point effect and the skill drain effect, <laughs> and the third effect, I'll be like, I'll be like, sometime you'll be activating that if you can have like three sacred beasts. Any card they sent to graveyard are banished. This card is like stupid nuts when, uh, when sacred beast got the support. And this card allows us, allows us to get a continuous trap and add to our hand. So we can pretty much infinite loop get cracked down back to our hand and set it and just take our opponent's monster over and over again. So pretty much your opponent, if you get this card and you have two sacred beasts, get lane points and negate your, your, monster's, uh, your monster's effect, pretty much you make it game. So three copies of this trap card because this card is super nuts. Then we play two uh, infinite permanents. Uh, Infinite Premiers is an okay card. We just use it to negate our opponents if we go going second. Um, 
pretty much we just set it or negate it, just like that. You already know what the effect does. And we play one skill drain. In case we don't draw our our awakening awakening of the sacred bees or we don't get two sacred bees out, pretty much skill drain will do the same thing. So yeah. So that does for the main deck. On to uh, extra deck. We play um, Link, one Link Rebo, one Omraj, one Relinquish Anima for our ones. Um, pretty much, if our opponent uh, summons a card on the on, on top of the extra deck, extra extra monster zone, we just link them off. You expect to equip it and just take monster for our opponent, so we can just make them lose more resources. Amrod, we just have it to like to stop from um, destruction and stuff like that. And Link Rebo, Link Rebo is a level one. Then our rank level two, we have Nightmare Phoenix, Predator Pine, Verta Anaconda, a Tank Sag, Cerberus. Uh, Predator Pine, Verta Anaconda. If we have like, if we have. Our three sacred beast card in the graveyard. We can just pretty much use uh, Prime Pepper to add a con effect. Pay 2,000 light points. Send the send the fusion card, uh, Dimension Fusion Destruction to the graveyard. Uh, banish them and fusion summon the sacred beast monster that we're gonna show right now. But yeah, uh, Nightmare Cerberus. This card is must be meant to be IP Masquerina, but I couldn't get it, so. Uh, Nightmare Server is a good replacement, but yeah. And plus, we can use that type of servers and effect to discard a card, pop a card. So, really not a bad card for a replacement for IP Masquerina. But yeah. Then we play Nightmare Unicorn and Nightmare. I mean, not Nightmare. Negusu, the World Chalice Warrior. Uh, Unicorn just shuffles a card in upon its field. This one just sent a card from. For my field and my opponent's field to get your so we have like these cards to remove our opponent's problematic cards so if our opponent said uh cannot be absorbed by battle or by card effects no problem just shuffle the back or send to the graveyard so this is why we play these two uh you can pretty much uh, side, uh swap this card for something else but i play it because they can easily make level uh, uh level three uh, level three monsters for this one so thank you so nigiru nigiru is pretty good on to a level 4, we play Apeloza, uh, Soyuz Galdred, Unchain Abomination, and Unchain, uh, not Unchain, Axel Cold Talker. Axel Cold Talker in this deck is, is nuts. We could, if we can link off and somehow make Axel Cold Talker, use its effect to banish a card, pop a card, pretty much your opponent will not be able to do anything because your opponent cannot respond to Axis Cold Talker and I know I know some cards in here are too expensive but yeah if you want to play competitively Axis Cold Talker and Apeloza just helps out and I'll try to find a way to make find like a replacement for Apeloza but there's no other Link monster that has her effect that negates Monster on hand, any monster. So you will be having for draw power and unchain uh, to pop a card on, on the on end phase, end phase, or when a card when a card effect um, destroy on your opponent's side of the field, you can just pop another card. So this card is really underrated, and I will play this in my Elvis Zombie deck because. I could just pop a card, end phase, or whatever effect it triggers that lists on this card. So that's my that's the level uh, level four for the for links. I need to stop saying levels because they're link fours. Sorry guys. We play the Super Dragnaw Rail Cannon. Uh, we control level ten, so we can pretty much make this card easily and burn up one for two thousand. And the next card is called the Chaos Phantom. Uh, it's okay if we can somehow get uh, Anima and Pansag, pretty much just a straight OTK because against um, 10,000 attack for the Banish Take of monster from from the Banish from the graveyard and Speed Summon this card and pretty much OTK your opponent. So pretty much that's the sacred 
that's the that's the Sacred Beast deck for the July 2020. Uh, this deck actually was actually pretty good. I was testing it on other meta decks, and some decks could have problems on facing this deck, but um, I enjoyed it. I uh, may play it uh, tourney uh, when it like, comes back. But shout out to Gamers Club because they got their sacred their structure deck earlier and I was able to get the card and some of the other cards. So yeah. If you guys enjoyed this the deck profile, uh, hit the like button, uh, subscribe if you guys are new and comment down uh, what cards um, sh uh, should I put in this um, sacred beast deck to make it way better. But thank you guys for tuning in to the video and see you guys in the next uh, deck profile. Peace.